Hi, I'm Susan Dickman. I'm a poet, artist, and uh, I teach blind and visually impaired students. I work primarily in encaustic, which is a way of painting with molten uh, beeswax and Damar resin. Um, and I really like this. Um, I, I gravitated toward this uh, process because it allows me to use heat, fire. I can use tools to scrape and gouge and make marks. And I'm really into mark making. I'm interested in narrative and the holes in the story. I like to explore the sort of intersecting spaces that come up, come up between image and text. And um, I like to make marks and uh, asomic words to convey the kind of unspoken um, ideas and thoughts that fall between the cracks, um, lost spaces that involve language and um, those kinds of liminal spaces. Uh, call and response is uh, encaustic paper oil sticks um, and it's on birch panel. It's 12, uh, 24 by 12. Um, I and chose to include call and response in the Haggadah, even though the concept that it emerged from predates the Passover story. Uh, in fact, it's really about that moment when a voice speaks to Abraham from out of the vastness of the desert and gives him this rather ridicu ridiculous instruction to leave his family pick up, go to a place that God is going to reveal to him. Uh, the very idea I've always found strangely absurd. It always made me wonder like whether one would really know whether to trust that voice. But regardless, that moment of God speaking and Abraham responding and, and responding with a resounding yes um, in our own convention and tradition of call and response in prayer and in blessing and nearly all Jewish observance continues to be something that I find uh, really poignant. This piece is titled Middle Passage. Uh, it's encaustic, photograph, oil sticks, and um, on birch panel, and it's 12 by 18. I chose to include Middle Passage because it's a contemporary link to Passover that resounds uh, greatly for me. Uh, for me, this piece is about the weight of the immigrant and refugee population worldwide how constant it is, how much a backdrop or even wallpaper uh, to life in Europe and North America it is, and just how spectacularly um, degrading and brutal it is that people seeking better lives have to resort to boats on waterways and seas all over the world. Um, the sheer number of people who are moved and carried by water worldwide um, is staggering. And it seemed to me linked to the famed you know, middle passage of the transatlantic slave trade. Um, in this image, I see the slaves and indentured peoples all, in all times and places being transported and seeking uh, liberation. Hi, I am Berit Engen. I am from Norway where I learned weaving as a child and I now weave small scale tapestries in linen yarn. And in 2007, I started working on a series called The Whimsical Haggadah, Our Colorful Prayer Book. And I'm now about to finish this series and have about 60 tapestries reflecting on both the big questions of the Haggadah and the smaller details of the Seder rituals. And this tapestry is called um, In Every Generation, every individual must feel as if he or she personally come out of Egypt. So that's from the Magid and the, the, the title itself is the Hebrew phrase, Behold Dor Vador, in every generation. And this phrase represents a fundamental Jewish thought that Judaism is primarily not a private spiritual experience, but a communal historic development with a purpose in which human beings play an active role. And the tapestry is uh, about uh, eight and a half inches by six and a half. And then the next tapestry. So this tapestry is uh, nine by six and a half inches. And um, uh, I'm here dealing with what 
does the holiday look like? We don't decorate our houses for Pesach, but we make rearrange the furniture. Like we have to put our uh, dining room table diagonal in our small dining room in order to have room for everyone. And for children, that creates a lot of anticipation when they see that. And uh, uh, in the tapestry, you can see children are seated at one side, a short end of the table. After all, they are the guest of honor this day. And uh, 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 it, the table is uh, bright and yellow and happy with a nice cedar plate, but the surroundings are um, kind of sad. Uh, or a little bluish, melancholic, because this tapestry is called uh, uh, Elijah in the room. Um, and maybe Elijah didn't come. Yes, my name is Jonathan Franklin. I'm a visual artist and uh, I use a, ver a variety of media and I have always used the figure as a point of departure in, in most of my work. The portraits uh, above, or these portraits, were created from 100-year-old photographs that I found in a box in a dumpster next to, well, in a dumpster in an alley. And I cut the original photographs apart and mixed up all the pieces. And typically, um, as I do, my, much of my work is the sum of many parts, physically, emotionally, intellectually. Stylistically, I wander in any number of directions between abstract and realism, and I often combine many con contrasting or contradictory pieces together uh, to create a, a, uh, a dissonant tension. And all of these elements are created, or sorry, are revealed in these portraits. The piece is about uh, five by five inches by five inches square, and it's a digitally manipulated collage. And it's titled The Four Children. When I just turned 22, I was right out of art school. I moved to a kibbutz uh, near the Gaza Strip where I lived on and off for several years. Um, it was quite secular. And although they often acknowledge the various festivals and holidays, there was no religious uh, observance. The dining hall, which was at, the, at that time an old wooden prefab structure, probably like something you'd see at a summer camp, was the social center. Um, they had meetings there, performances, showed movies, and of course they ate there. And I have fond recollections of attending a few Passover seders there um, with a couple hundred people squeezed into it. At the seders, there was always a festive atmosphere with people singing and chatting and uh, working their way through the Haggadah. <laughs> and, and when I first arrived on the kibbutz, I spent the first few months there making sketches and drawing people in the community. and. After about six months, I decided to try my hand at painting. I found some wood, cut it into strips, banged the frame together, stretched the canvas, leaned the canvas against the wall in my room, and I sat on the floor and began to paint. And this is the painting. And this is my first painting that I made out of art school. It's called The Festive Meal. Uh, and it's the first of many that came, it, it's the first of many that, I, that I've been working on for 42 years since then. It's, um, I'm not actually sure what the dimensions are. I think it is around about four, uh, 50, we'll say it's about 50 by 50, or sorry, 48 by 60 inches. That's an oil on canvas. Done. Howdy, I'm Alan Havscheid. I'm a Chicago-based artist. I work mostly in oils. I do a lot of digital manipulated images and uh, occasionally work in woodcuts. I'll show you one later here. But let's start with this image. This is called Makamif. Uh, Makamif uh, is uh, a Hebrew uh, word that I created uh, that combines the word for monster uh, with the word for curses. And uh, I created these 10 images of the 10 plagues 
uh, as a riff on the famous Pokemon uh, characters that were certainly popular when I first created this uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, Pokemon means pocket monster, so uh, I was uh, emulating that uh, idea. Uh, I created these originally on a poster board with markers uh, because I was uh, leading the satyrs uh, when I had uh, a number of young children and uh, adults who were uh, difficult to maintain their attention. So uh, at different points in the Seder, I would introduce these characters and certainly when we recited the 10 plagues. Uh, so uh, this was uh, definitely uh, meant to engage children uh, because I believe that the Seder is really uh, this family event and uh, definitely directed at, at them. Um, next image, please. My second image in the Haggadah is a woodcut that I created specifically for this uh, book. Uh, it shows the images of two creatures. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little boy at heart and I'm really into animals and dinosaurs and weird animals and creatures like that. So uh, what you see on top is uh, a creature called Leviathan and on the bottom is one called Behemoth. Uh, in this case, they're kind of uh, shown as a sea serpent and a bull. Uh, both of them are engaging their tails in their mouths. They're literally uh, uh, eating themselves. And this represents a concept called Ouroboros, which means to eat your own tail. And uh, it uh, symbolizes the um, the nature of the um, the infinity of unity that there is this recycling that's coming back together. This relates to the fourth cup, Kos Revi e, uh, in the Seder. Uh, the fourth cup is, in my interpretation, looking forward to the Olam Haba, to the world to come, to the Messianic age, and at the end of the Seder. You're, the, that theme is very prominent as Elijah is welcomed, uh, heralding the messianic age one day. And there are songs at the end that we sing like Adir Hu, which explicitly refers to messianic times or Lechagadya, which talks about God's supremacy over the world. And so this image um, relates these mythical creatures to that time when they will eventually uh, come full circle and complete their, uh, their presence in uh, God's creation. Hi, my name is Ellen Holtzblatt. Um, I am a visual artist and I work in the media of oil painting drawing with graphite, ink, and charcoal, and I also do woodcut printmaking. Um, just a little plug, my work this in this spring, my work is going to be exhibited in several galleries in Chicago, uh, at Springboard Art Center, Gallery Studio O, and the Chicago Artist Coalition, where I'm an artist resident in the Hatch program. Um, when In general, of my drawings and my paintings, I tend to work from observation but I view my art as being an exploration of the connection between the physical and the spiritual, the memories of the body that reside in the soul. In this particular piece is a woodcut that I created specifically for the Sagata. It is a limited edition on Japanese paper and it is 10 by eight inches. Um, it addresses the Midrashic symbolism from the rabbis about the first Kiddush of the Seder specifically the term of deliverance, I will bring you out. This image relates to a current series that I'm working on about forest with both old and new growth and fallen trees. And this series is tentatively titled Tree Graveyards. And so in the series, um, even though I have the term graveyards, I'm really envisioning um, 
the removal of burdens as being both a birth and a death, as events in our life happen both sequentially and cyclically. We live tempered by the expectation of what is to come. Things begin, they expand, and then they are gone. So this forest in the woodcut depicts the narrow space that we pass through when we are on our journey. We must leave somewhere to go somewhere else. And in this woodcut, the Kiddush, Kiddush messages that separation. This painting is titled Like a Lily Among Thorns. It is an oil on linen. It is 60 inches high by 30 inches wide. It is a painting of my mother um, and she is 97 years old. I've been working on a series of paintings about my mother. Um, she has been living with me periodically during the pandemic. Before that, she was living in an independent living place. But we, my sister and I took her out during the pandemic. Um, so through her during this period of time, I've witnessed the effects of isolation and the needs of the body, both basic functional needs and also the spiritual and emotional needs that are satisfied largely through physical proximity with others, touch and intimacy. This painting is part of a series of portraits of her. Uh, the titles for all these works, as, as this title is as well, comes from Shir HaShirin's Song of Songs. For those of you who are familiar with Song of Songs, it is a very beautiful text. It's both explicitly sex sensual and sexual and metaphorically spiritual. It describes an intense relationship. I choose to title works of my mother from this text in order to convey this truth. Love and desire, the need for human contact and touch are universal. In this difficult time of the pandemic and social isolation, this reality becomes painfully clear. My name is Judith Joseph. I make paintings and woodblock prints, and I also make ketubot. My work can be seen online at judithjosephstudio.com. I teach watercolor painting and calligraphy at the Chicago Botanic Garden. My first piece is glass half full. It's 20 inches by 16 inches. The medium is egg tempera with gold and palladium leaf. Egg tempera is a paint I make myself from fresh egg yolks and pure pigments in the style of medieval and Renaissance artists such as Botticelli. I first started using it for ketubot as I wanted a paint that lasts for hundreds of years without fading. The color is brilliant and intense and the medium lends itself to very fine detail. This painting was inspired by the intifadas, the Palestinian uprisings in Israel. I thought about the suffering of people on both sides of the conflict and the fact that sometimes the Jewish people is on the upside of history and sometimes we're on the downside. At the Seder and at all Jewish celebrations, we drink full cups of wine to represent the fullness and blessings of life. The glass in my painting is half full, but it's divided vertically. On the left side, the full side is a tree of life representing the long life of Israel. The right side is nearly empty. In the dregs at the bottom lie the casualties of violence. Dividing the two sides is concertina wire, such as we see on the borders of war warring groups. During the Intifada, terrorists dug under the borders to enter Israel. They killed civilians, including children. My painting depicts an underground warren of tunnels and ladders as I thought about the infrastructure of death. I also thought about the fact that for centuries, people have wanted to be buried in Jerusalem. The holy city has been inhabited for thousands of years and below ground, it is a huge necropolis. The skeletons convey this idea with a little dark humor to relieve my anxiety about the violence that is the dark side of the city of peace. Next image, please. Thank you. Spring tree is an acrylic painting on canvas. It's 40 inches by 30 inches. Unlike the previous work, the details are in the execution, uh, the way of, I, that I painted it more than the imagery, which is um, not as detailed 
as the prior painting. For me, the tree of life is the default image. It is the symbol of hope, life, truth. The tree reaches deep into the earth for nourishment and stability as human beings yearn for God and God needs humanity in a symbiotic partnership. The priestly blessing, which is written in Hebrew in this painting, hovers in its branches as a promise of redemption. May God bless and guard you. May God's countenance shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up God's face towards you and grant you peace. After all, the Seder is all about redemption and hope. My name is Carol Niger, and I am an artist who works um, in the Chicagoland area and work paint primarily in oils, but also watercolor and some acrylic. And I have a, a large, a long background in printmaking, and I print both with woodblock and monoprint, but primarily with monoprint on a small press. And um, this piece is titled Dahlia Delirium. I had been painting dahlias, studying dahlias sort of as a theme of studying life cycle. I, as I paint mostly in uh, landscape, studying the landscape and thinking about uh, memory and place. And uh, so in the dahlia paintings that I had been doing, they were quite different than this one and showing both the beauty of new birth and decay and death at the same time. And this painting was painted um, right at the time of Passover, when Passover uh, was last year at 2020, uh, right at the, the start uh, when COVID um, was entering all of our lives. And Passover is also called Hag Hahaviv, the festival of spring. And as we prepared um, to celebrate Passover, everything was happening. It seemed like we had ongoing plagues as the months unfolded. Um, we had hail as big as golf balls, lakes and rivers around the world turning blood red by pollution and bacteria, locusts descending on East Africa, frogs emerging in sinks in England, lice, gnat, and fly, black fly outbreaks, and widespread power outages. And then in our own country, we experienced a season of this widespread civil unrest as a response to this persistent social inequity that we are experiencing. So this painting was, is an example of, I paint both with control and lack of control. So it was a lot of acrylic thrown as on one surface on the canvas, um, acrylic pores where chemical reactions happen and then finding control within that space. So what this, this um, was painted right at the beginning of the pandemic lockdown and the quarantine as a response to the unpredictability in nature. And spring had arrived, but with it, the realization that nature can be both beautiful and scary and structured and chaotic, patterned and random, but one thing for sure, we can't control it. Okay. When we uh, created the concept of the Haggadah, we decided that we wanted to represent each of the cups of wine with a woodblock print from different artists in the group. And this piece is um, representing the third cup and it is called, I will redeem you, the third cup. There's, there's a lot of, um, I always wondered about the different cups of wine, what symbolism they had. And as I researched this, I found that there are a lot of different schools of thought on the meaning behind the third, the three cups, the four cups, sorry. But the, some sages say that the third cup represents the splitting of the sea, after which the Israelites felt completely redeemed without fear of the Egyptians recapturing them. So this is um, my attempt to kind of articulate what I felt about this, which was that um, it, the outs that, first of all, that art is all an interpretation and there's so many ways you can look at it, but the outstretched arms, just a symbol of the power of God and um, if you look very closely at the palm, you see that the, it represents the arduous route out of Egypt and that the idea that there, there was a plan and that there, God was behind it and God was sort of guiding the way for the Israelites. And um, so the idea here too is the splitting of the sea. So you can kind of see the, the, the sea of reeds in the bottom sort of, I like to work relatively abstract and um, then the use of monoprint is that gray tone on top that kind of just gives that division, that feeling of the duality of um, the, both the 
the power of uh, feeling redeemed, but at the same time that you should not rejoice in another's death, and, but you should feel eliminate, liberated. Um, I also wanted to work with the negative space in the sky. You can kind of see representation of the wine glass up there. Um, and uh, it, when I think about the, when I reenact the, our em emancipation from slavery uh, year to year, I'm thinking about my responsibility, what's my path, my journey, my opportunity. And to me, it's comforting to feel God's protection and guidance along the way. Hi, my name is Beth Shader and I'm an artist who works primarily in watercolor and sometimes watercolor and mixed media and paper. Um, and much of my work, current work addresses the idea of um, human impact on, the, on our environment. Um, and when I thought about the Haggadah and thought about the idea of Seder, Seder is our yearly call to action. The Haggadah is a um, tale of a journey to freedom. And we may not be plagued at this point by the kinds of plagues that are listed in the Haggadah, like uh, boils and locusts and so on. But I tend to think about the contemporary plagues that we are saddled with, uh, things like racism, homophobia, social inequity, and uh, degradation of others in all kinds of ways. And so in my work and the works that I present, they don't address specifics of the stator itself, and, but address them metaphorically and symbolically. This first work that you're looking at called Release, it's a very small watercolor, four by four inches, but it's part of a larger, a long accordion book called Release, and there's 16 pages in it. Um, but it's a handmade book, and um, the book was made a number of years ago, um, and was dedicated to my sister. Um, my sister had the actual plague of living with mental illness throughout her life. And she died at 59 years old of a very rare form of cancer. And so this book was um, meant to show a feeling of a journey of release. And it starts out in the um, beginning of the book with a beach scene and um, the look of water. And then the water becomes more and more abstract, which eventually becomes cancer cells, which are very beautiful, and then becomes images of the sky. And so this was my sister's personal path to freedom that um, she no longer would need to be plagued with that living with mental illness, which is a, a great difficulty. Um, my second work that I'm going to talk about in the Seder is called Cleave. And that work is a very contemporary work related to my um, idea of this particular plague of the human destruction of the environment. I look a lot at glaciers and do a lot of research based on um, how the glaciers have been impacted by global warming. And this particular glacier, glacial cleave, as you can see in the middle of the painting, part of the ice is cleaving off from the rest of the ice, um, is from Glacial, uh, Glacier National Park. And so the idea of this is the metaphor of glacial ice melt cleaving and um, showing the irresponsibility of man in taking care of the earth. So um, it's also reflective of the title of the idea of out of the narrows. You can see the, um, the narrow path that comes through but then it opens to a wider environment. And so it reflects on my idea that in our journey, we are, we are not free until everyone is free. And I truly just want my work to reflect the Jewish concept of tikkun olam. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jane Weintraub, and I am a trained jeweler metalsmith. Um, my work is both functional and non-functional and secular and non-secular. These particular pieces um, are, this is a, a K-12 
candle holders, obviously, Shabbat candle holders. Um, and they represent seraphim or fire angels. And fire angels are found in the book of Isaiah. Um, they fly around the divine um, crying, holy, holy, holy. Um, these are made of silver. I fabricate my pieces. Um, they're not cast. They're not made by machines. I do this by hand. So I basically start out with a flat sheet of silver and cut it and bend it and um, file it, solder it, um, and then finally finish it. So these are all um, finely crafted handmade pieces. Um, you, can do, you can show the next piece now. Okay, the next piece um, is called Jacob's Pillow. It's a Mizrach, and I had just really learned what a Mizrach is. Um, it, it, a Mizrach is, uh, mean, means East in Hebrew, and it's a plaque placed on the Eastern wall of one's home, indicating the direction the Jews face during prayer, the direction of Jerusalem. Um, also, during um, this period, I, I, I've been studying uh, the Midot, and when um, it came to the Haggadah, I started thinking about the idea um, of this um, next year in Jerusalem, and then the Midah that we had just studied, which is Shalom Bayit, um, which means peace in the home. So in this, in, in this Mizrach, Home becomes a sacred space, and it is more about how and where we make our home and less about physical location. Whether we are in Jerusalem, Jakarta, or Joliet, we are connected and become one in peace. Uh, the subject matter of this Mizrach, you see a pillow, a silver pillow. Um, that's Jacob's pillow, which is referenced in Genesis. Jacob um, fleeing uh, Padam Aram from Esau's murderous rage lays down to sleep and his head is resting on a group of stones. Jacob took not one stone, but 12, which eventually merged into one, foreshadowing a time when the 12 tribes of Israel would become one. And in this, if you count carefully, I've used 13 stones the last stone representing Jacob's daughter, Dina. Jacob's pillow is seen resting on top of a hamsa. When facing down, the hamsa represents welcome, um, which we welcome people to our home for the Seder. The texture on the hamsa is sand reminiscent of the desert the Jews wandered until they arrived home. Behind the pillow and hamsa is a sort of a compass the remaining stone is facing east and the two floating stones have broken away and will eventually form Jacob's ladder once they are re reunited with the eastern stone. Um, and again, this, is, um, this piece is eight inches by eight inches. The um, candle holder were six inches tall. I don't know if I said that. But uh, this is, these are again fabricated out of start with flat sheet of metal and then go through a series of um, steps. Thank you. Hello, my name is Amy Reichert. I'm an architect, exhibition designer and Judaica designer. And I view all three of those quite different disciplines really as, as visual problem solving at different scales. Um, so the challenge with Judaica design is really how to solve both the practical and poetic problems that have been presented by our tradition uh, to enrich these daily, monthly, and yearly ritual acts. Um, this is a Seder plate. Uh, whose form was really generated by looking closely at the ritual foods that we're commanded to place on the Seder plate. Um, and in looking closely at them, I realized that half of them represent slavery and half represent freedom. Yet I had never seen a Seder plate that really articulated that difference, thereby helping us propel the story uh, of the Exodus forward. 
Um, so here, the slavery foods of the bitter herbs, Hazaret Embarer and Haroset, which stands for the brick and mortar, are set into a heavy fossil laden Jerusalem stone slab, uh, emphasizing our sort of psychological and physical imprisonment in slavery. Of the freedom foods, the free will offering, the egg and the springtime green of the parsley are set on a floating uh, hammered brass disc. Um, emphasizing our floating quality, but also our freedom in the desert. And separating but connecting the two is a channel of salt water, symbolizing the Red Sea, which is an element, the salt water that some people include on their Seder plate. So it really helps you tell the story from uh, slavery to freedom simply by pointing at the different elements uh, on the plate. And this is a limited edition of, of 36 plates. Okay. Next. Um, this is a Miriam's cup. Um, like Moses, Miriam is really absent from the Haggadah. There's no mention of her. Uh, yet in the 1980s, um, a group of feminists, Jewish feminists decided that she should have a place at the Seder um, as part of our, our ritual dinner, given that she played such an important role in both uh, saving the Jewish people in many ways. Um, Miriam's uh, dance at the shores of the Red Sea is all, often depicted as her playing a tambourine, leading the women in song and dance. Um, but in doing some archaeological research, I realized that if she had a percussion instrument, it probably would have been a sistrum, which was a kind of Egyptian rattle, rather than a tambourine as we think of it. So the form of the stem here is that of a sistrum, an ancient Egyptian rattle, and it's formed with mother of pearl, uh, discs and freshwater pearls, uh, which also recall the dangling earrings that the uh, Jewish women donated um, toward the making of the tabernacle in the desert. Uh, this piece is sterling silver and is about six inches high, and it does actually rattle and make a sort of um, shimmying sound when you shake it at the Seder table. My name is Dorit Jordan Dotan. I'm a visual artist. I was born and raised in Haifa, Israel. In my work, I combined used materials, uh, photography uh, and installations art. I like to do uh, work with a variety of materials to express my uh, artistic views, political and social. Um, for this, uh, for this Agada, I chose to show here two of the pieces that are uh, presented there. This, this, the first one is this uh, chair dreams floating in ancient times. It's a 36 by 24 uh, fine art print uh, created in 2015. This, this piece you see here is the background of Nabatian oasis at the Negev Desert in Israel. Um, and, the, and the chair is a chair that I found and I cover it with used balloons. I did it in order to connect between the past and the present and the future, exactly like the Haggadah is, telling the story from ancient times, generation after generation till our days of today. The second piece here is Abandoned Memories, created with acrylic and colored pencils. The size is 12 inch by eight. Created it in Chicago in 2019. I choose to put this image here to show it as this reminds the story of my family. They flew from Vienna and stayed in ghetto Shanghai, China for 10 years which was not so easy to create a Pesach Seder, not a traditional. When they came back, I mean, they came to Palestina. My grandfather insisted we will continue celebrate the Seder. Every Seder, there were memories coming up from those years. They were very strong years for my family and the story was continuing generation after generations. All the memories came up and the stories 
of cedar were mixed with those. And this is my second piece at the Haggadah. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>